Hello, Teeny Ryan's family, Juwan Buford Broadcasting, Trent Metro, and decidedly, actually not decidedly, that'd be a, not true, <laughs> but I'll admit, I'm, I'm a bit uncomfortable with the training I'm getting ready to share because I just firmly believe in something that one of my business mentors shared with me a long time ago, um, Mr. John Hoffman, he say this all the time, that your punishment for not asking for referrals is making cold calls. That's your punishment, right? And I wanna make sure I'm very, very crystal clear on this because what I don't want is for our team members to use this video as an excuse to avoid warm market when there are lessons that you need to learn. Repeat this again. There are lessons that you need to learn when approaching warm market that will help you become more effective at cold market. And if you do not learn those lessons, I'm telling you right now, cold market is not a game. You will get your nose bludgeoned, your pride hurt. You won't understand certain nuances and things that are required to be successful in cold market. And as a result, you're not going to have success that you anticipate. I'm letting you know that right now, right? So you're speaking from someone that's been doing this for almost 20 years. Well, not almost. I have been cold calling and warm calling for 20 years, Okay. Um, so, you know, working with business owners, approximately 15 a week for 15 years of that working as an investment advisor. When I first started out almost 20 years ago, because of my background, uh, where I hail from, I did not have a warm market per se, per se. When I started out my practice as an investment advisor, I had to create warm market. There's a training that'll probably be it any probably it'll be in the, in the notes, right? It'll be in the description here to accompany this video. But I need you to understand, do not avoid warm market. I cannot say that enough. If you try to skip warm market and decide you want to jump right in the cold market and you get your nose bloody and you don't get the results that you want, you be a grown adult. It's your responsibility. You caught that L. It's not the PPLSI doesn't work. It's not that the trainings don't work. It's not that the product and services aren't good. You decided you weren't going to be coachable. All right. So I had to go there, right? So anyway, cold market, right? Or calling up business owners that you may not have a relationship with, which once again is your punishment for not asking for referrals. And let's say you are going to utilize the phone to achieve this goal. So I'm gonna share a couple approaches that I use when I am dealing with cold market. Or if I'm calling in a market that I don't have that much familiarity with and they don't have much familiarity with me, right? And so what would I do? Well, number one, I would create a list. There's a training. Uh, that's going to be in the description that talks about why a list is important and how to create a list. I'm not going to go ad nauseum on it now, but I'm going to tell you, you need a list. If you don't have a list, same thing, right? If you catch that L, if you don't get the results you're looking for, if things don't go the way that you expect them to go, it's your fault. It's not the training. It's not the tools. It's not the product, service, the company. It's you. So take responsibility. So I encourage you to watch the video on how to build a list, why a list is important, and how a list can help you be a better cold caller, okay? So I want you to be aware of that. All right, so now you've created the list. So what are you going to say <laughs> when you call this list of business owners and entrepreneurs that you don't have a relationship with? Well, I'm going to give you a couple, once again, approaches that hopefully serve you very well, right? And there will be a written version of the script too as well, because you know I talk pretty fast. I know that, but I'm trying to cover a lot of content in a short amount of time because I don't have a lot of time to record the video. All right. So one of the first questions you're going to get, or you should anticipate when you call up someone, so it's ring, ring, Bob, John, Regina, whoever answers the phone. One of the first questions they're going to ask is, what is your business? Who is this? Right? My response to that is going to be, Look, my name's Juwan Buford. I'm calling with PPLSI. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm going to pause. Or I'm going to say I'm a business owner or I'm a franchise owner with PPLSI. And I'm going to press pause. This pause is really important. You got to give the person a chance to process what's being said, right? And it separates you from everyone else because it there's a nuance here. There's a certain degree of professionalism here. You got to press pause to give them a moment to process because you jump on the line like this. No one likes to be sold to. No one wants to feel like they randomly picked the phone, got on the phone with a stranger, and all of a sudden they're being inundated with content, right? That's not what you do. So I'll say, hey, Regina, my name's Juwan. I'm calling PPLSI. Do you have a moment? I got to put that in the script, right? That's the net. I pause. Do you have a moment? 
right? I'm showing respect. I'm showing professionalism. I'm letting them know that I'm here to possibly listen and learn. It's not me just calling you to throw up on you and I haven't even qualified you and don't even know what it is that you need or want, right? Keep in mind, amateur sale, professional sort. So I'm gonna say, hey, Regina, I'm calling my PPLSI. Do you have a moment? And once again, they're gonna say, what's this all about? Why are you calling, right? That is gonna be the question that they have. You need to anticipate that question. Right. And my response is going to be, look, we help entrepreneurs and small business owners like you or we help entrepreneurs and small business owners in your industry or in your field or in your market. Or I may say I'm the neighborhood PPLSI representative in your field and in your market. And what we basically do is we help entrepreneurs or small business owners by helping them conduct research, acquire more clients, acquire financing and just make better financial tax and legal decisions. And instead of charging them two to four dollars an hour or a two thousand dollar retainer, we actually provide these services for approximately two to five dollars a day. How does that sound? Now, look, you get on the phone, and you have the best script on the face of the earth. If your timing isn't right, meaning it's not even you oftentimes, you may, call them, may have caught them when they're busy. You may have caught them when they're in a pissed off mood. They may be having a day or you may get on the phone with someone who's not even the decision maker. You could have an over assertive person trying to protect their decision maker, their owner or CEO of the company. Right. And they may snap back at you, say something snotty or sarcastic, or they may just hang up on you. Click, click, boom. It happens with regularity. Right. But that's kind of what it sounds like. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to call up Regina. Hey, my name's Juwan with PPLSI. Um, look, do you have a moment? She's going to ask me, well, okay, what's this all about? And I'm going to say, well, look, we help entrepreneurs and small business owners uh, by helping them conduct research. We help you acquire more clients. We help you make, we help you acquire financing and make better tax and financial and legal decisions. And instead of charging you two to four dollars an hour for these type of services and assistance, um, or a $2,000 retainer, we do it for about two to five dollars a day. Can I interest you in that? Right? That's what's going to come out of my mouth. Now, once again, if that business owner is, once again, remember who our target market is or our A prospect is. Our A prospect is an entrepreneur or business owner that is looking to level up. They're looking to make better decisions. They're at a point where they realize I have to do something different, right? And you need to understand that and you need to read the script too that accompanies this. Um, so you need to understand that. There are individuals who also make what I call blink decisions, meaning they, within the first couple seconds, they make a decision as to whether or not they want to listen to you anymore or not, right? They make decisions. They don't hem and haw and put you in a land of maybe, well, I don't know, maybe, no, that's not our target market, okay? And they typically have disposable income to pay for our services. So be aware of that, right? That's why I stress we sort, we don't sell. We're looking for individuals who want to level up. Something I might throw in there nowadays, because the script is a little bit old, is I may stay instead of just acquire finance and acquire credit, I help them market their business more effectively online, right? That's something that's very important to business owners right now. So those are the things that I would, that's how I would lead, right? Once again, my name's Juwan, I'm calling PPLSI, I'm press pause. Do you have a moment? Okay, we help entrepreneurs and small business owners like you in your field or in your market, whichever language sounds best to you in your field, helping to conduct research, acquire more clients, acquire finances, market their business more effectively online, and just make better financial tax and legal decisions. And we can assist you with this and as opposed to charging you two to four dollars an hour, uh, like you would anticipate, or a $2,000 retainer, we can do it for about two to five dollars a day. How does that sound? All right? Now, the person's interested, if they're kind of curious, or they may even have a story to tell you, which is good, because once they start chirping and talking, they're giving you data, they're giving you information you can turn around and use to solidify the appointment. Notice what I said. You're not calling to make a sale. You're calling to set an appointment. You're not calling to make a sale. You're calling to make an appointment because no business owner is going to make a business decision. They're not going to spend their hard earned currency for a stranger and they don't know you from Bob over the hill. Okay. The objective is to set an appointment to give yourself an opportunity to share hundred percent of the information as opposed to a snippet. Because once again, entrepreneurs are not going to invest in anything, at least not smart ones without learning about it first, right? And you're gonna use this psychology to your advantage. So one of the next questions you should anticipate is they're gonna say, well, what do you do? You're gonna say, well, look, we take you the business owner or we take you the entrepreneur and we wrap you around a network of over 7,000 attorneys and business consultants across North America, United States and Canada. 
with on average 20 years of experience and we pay our firms upwards of a quarter million, upwards of $2 million per month to serve you as our client. Now I'm going to press pause when I share it because I want them to process that, right? That we're paying our firms anywhere from a quarter of a million upwards of $2 million per month to serve them as our client. And don't be lazy in language. I'm using certain words for a reason. Follow this script. If you don't know what it's like to have a $30,000 day in business offering services and products, follow this script. Okay? So don't deviate. Don't, don't, this is a two step. Do not make it a salsa. Until you get this script down, when you get it down, you understand the psychology behind it, we can have a chat conversation about that. Then you can start doing a salsa and deviate and do whatever it's going to do. But first, use the script, especially until you understand the psychology behind the words in the conversation, right? So I'm going to press pause on that. Like it's a second pause. Don't make it too uncomfortable, right? I'm just press pause. And what do you think upwards of $2 million buys you in terms of service and assistance? pause. We'll do things like, well, hold on, let me stop. What do you think upwards of $2 million worth of buys you? And I'm going to listen. I'm pressing pause while I'm listening. And once again, an entrepreneur who's curious is going to start chirping. They're going to start talking about a lot of services, this, that, this, that, other. That's great. That's all fantastic. You're absolutely right. Right? Or click, click, boom, <laughs> whatever the case is going to be. You might, they don't know you. But trust me, if you've gotten this far in a conversation, nine times out of 10, they're willing to listen. If you got this far in it, you've piqued their interest and they're willing to listen. Now, you don't have a lot of time, okay? Because um, you got, keep in mind, someone calls me up trying to sell me something, man, you better cut to the chase. You better get to this point because, whoops, um, because the bottom line is, um, like I said, you don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of bandwidth. I got a million things going on, child. I got to do something with her. I got two, three other phone calls, another Zoom call, a whole bunch of other stuff going on. You only have a couple moments, okay? So what do you think it buys you? Press pause. Ideally, I want them to talk because once again, the more they talk, the more data they give me. The more they share their frustrations, their issues, and their concerns, I can utilize those frustrations and concerns to solidify the appointment, right? So if they say, well, a lot, or okay, so what you got? I said, well, look, we'll do things like we'll answer business and legal questions that you might have, might relate to copyright or trademark, maybe questions about tax deductions, whatever the case may be, we'll review contracts and documents, or if you're named in a civil suit, we'll actually show up to court and we'll defend the interests of your business. Now, at this point, you need to have a good membership story. If you don't have a good membership story, you need to go borrow a membership story. You need to share a membership, an example, Facts tell, stories sell. You're selling them on setting the appointment. So I have a number of stories I might share. I might talk about how a landscaper, that was a client of mine, was being messed over real bad by a mega church here in the metro, metropolitan area. Had a contract with them. For whatever reason, the pastor had a good friend that decided that he wanted to go with a good friend, but he already had a contract with my client. He decided to break the contract. Now, if you know anything about landscaping, you know, he bought money based on that contract. He went and got equipment. He hired personnel. So he's in a hole to do this job and all of a sudden it's being cut from underneath him. Thankfully he had our service. He was able to make a phone call to our law firm. Our law firm wrote a letter on his behalf to the pastor. Also responded to some correspondence involving the pastor's attorney. Long story short, when the dust settled, that pastor ended up cutting him a check for the remainder of the year for that contract because it made more sense for him to do the right thing by my client, our Legal Shield member, than to turn around and face music in court and catch a significant L. It would have been a lot more expensive for him to catch that L, right? That's a story I might share. I got a million different stories. I might share a story about how we helped a restaurant owner that I'm familiar with avoid a really bad civil suit as it relates to a sexual harassment claim that occurred at his business that he wasn't even aware of, that he wasn't even a party to. But because he didn't have an employee handbook at the time, because it was three to $5,000, and because he was completely unaware as this transpired, the employees, you know, got into a conflict. You already know what happens. Employee quits, makes a phone call. We assist this business owner, provide him an employee handbook, which is three to $5,000, walk him through the whole legal conflict. It lasted approximately seven to nine months. And the only thing we charged him was that two to $5 a day. It ended up breaking down to about a little 
over a thousand dollars as opposed to the fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars that we he would have had to hire an attorney to get that matter resolved. Right? So I'm telling the story about how they can utilize the plan. I might share a story about how I utilize the plan to convert uh, my LLC, some member to manage to set up a holding company. I might share that story, but you need to have stories. If you don't have stories, you need to contact your B2B leadership to get some stories and testimonies that you can use, right? You need to maybe investigate the app, watch those videos, um, start utilizing your membership. That is a huge benefit. Use it. Get on the app, use your membership. I don't care. Call them up about what happens if I stump my toe when I'm walking in through the door of my apartment or my condo. Who's liable for that? <laughs> what if somebody walks into my condo or apartment and they stump their toe? Who's liable? Call, use it, get questions answered, right? You're a business owner. If you're a Legal Shield entrepreneur, if you're a PPLSI entrepreneur, do you know you're 1099? Do you know you're a business owner? You know one of the first questions you should ask right now, like immediately, is how do you maximize your tax deductions? You're getting ready to earn all this pre-tax income. And it's great, it's wonderful, right? Because unlike W-2s where everybody gets your money and then you get what's left over, you get your money first and everyone else gets what's left over. How do you maximize your deductions? Right, that should be the number one question you ask. You know how valuable that information is to business owners out here who have no idea? They have LLCs, they don't know anything about self-employment tax. I promise you, they don't. Um, they have s courses and, and no, don't have any idea what reasonable income is or non-taxable dividends. Trust me, they don't. Call the law firm, ask those questions. That will equip you with some incredible information. Any question you call the law firm will make you better able and effective to have this conversation with the entrepreneurs and business owners you're calling on. Okay, so, or of course, go to the shieldnation.com website. It is hyperlinked in the document that accompanies this document. Okay, this, this recording, so be aware of that. All right, so, they may ask you specifically, okay, tell me more. What do you cover? Talk to me. Now, here's the thing. Do not fall into the trick bag. Keep in mind, no business owner is going to make a decision based on anything you share with them. I promise you, they're not going to buy nada from you based on a phone call. Do not fall into the trick bag. People always swear they don't want to be sold and then turn around, well, tell me more, right? They're basically, you're going to give them enough information to make an uneducated no, but not an educated yes, because the reality of the matter is we're not selling incense. This is not... Heineken or Tupperware or lipstick out of a basement. This is a very important service. Has a lot of different utility, different types of utility and usage. There's a lot of different ways in which this plan can be a benefit. There's a hundred different ways in which this service can benefit. There's actually a document called a hundred different ways in which we serve entrepreneurs and families. hundred different ways. There's no way you're going to be articulate that. And the couple moments that you have that business owner, I promise you don't fall into the trap. Right. Have some backbone. In other words, this is your back, your ball. People cannot tell you how to conduct business. If somebody walked into a doctor's office and then told the doctor, I don't want you to ask questions. I don't want you to inventory what's going on. I don't want you to qualify me. Just give me this medication. They're getting escorted out the office. If you walk into a mechanic shop and you tell the mechanic, I don't want you to inventory what's wrong with the vehicle. I don't want you to find out what's wrong. I don't want you to do the diagnostic. I'm telling you what's wrong. I just need you to fix this so I can drive off the lot. That mechanic is not going to risk their license in a situation. They're going to say, kick rocks. I'm going to do the diagnostic on this vehicle. I decide whether or not you're going to pay or not for that diagnostic. That's what's going to happen before I do anything to this vehicle. Trust me, that's how it goes down. You need to have that same posture. You are, in essence, the franchise, a franchise owner, one of the fastest growing companies in the world. We produce families, approximately two families a month that earn in excess of six to seven figures, most of them part-time, spare-time, residual and passive income. Only 2% of the U.S. population even earns 100K per year plus on a consistent basis. You're part of a company that produces two families on a monthly basis that does that. Have posture. Know what you represent. Know what you're holding. And if you don't have the posture, you don't quite understand where I'm going with this, once again, contact your B2B leadership. We'll have that conversation with you. But you got to have posture. Do not fall into the trick bag, okay? The bottom line is, if you get on there and do a bunch of this, there's no reason for them to set the appointment, which means you will not get the client, okay? So one of my responses, nine times out of 10, when someone says, well, tell me more, I say, you know what? It would take me at least 20, 30 minutes to share everything that we do. And let's be honest here. Successful entrepreneurs, successful people, business owners, smart people like you don't make decisions based on phone calls or elevator pitches. And I typically press pause. And nine times out of ten, they say, you know what? You're absolutely right. Yeah, they don't. I wouldn't. Right. So I would say that. Don't make it. You know, once again, the successful entrepreneurs I know 
don't make decisions based on phone calls or elevator pitches. Typically, won't be the best time to meet with you briefly or have a virtual coffee, Zoom coffee, for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. What works best morning or afternoon, Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday or Friday, right? Either or. Give them either or. Business owners don't like to be told when to meet or how to meet. So you, morning or afternoon works best for you. Tuesday or Wednesday, Monday or Friday, whatever fits in your schedule. You're steering them right into the time that works in your schedule. But you got to give them options, right? Um, if you tell them, well, I can meet with you this time, this day, nine times a 10, you're not getting that appointment. Or if you go with, uh, I'm your neighborhood real estate representative, I'm going to be in your neighborhood Thursday morning because I'm meeting two other business owners down the street. Would it be okay if I popped in for 15, 20 minutes, right? That's how you want to go about that. All right, because keep in mind, the goal is to set the appointment. What if they insist? You have some business owners that are just insistent, that they're literally going to tell you it doesn't happen 1% of the time. So I don't want to hear the excuse. This only happens 1% of the time. Trust me, I eat calls like Skittles, sometimes 100 a day. I know after 20 years what the majority of the response is going to be. 1% of the time, you're going to have someone that is insistent I won't meet with you. I won't talk to you until you tell me more. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Okay. Rarely. This is what my response would be. You know what? I thank you for your interest and your desire to learn more. I appreciate that. Um, look, I'll gladly share an abbreviated corporate overview with you. That way you can learn more and really make an educated decision regarding how we can help you grow your business. I can send the information to you via email, text it to you. Whichever one is most convenient with you. How does that sound? Nine times out of 10, trust me, they're kind of sort of trying to get off the phone at this point. They really are. They're going to say, yeah. Now, what you're angling for is you really want the email. Let's be real. I, because when I'm dealing with young folks, I may sometimes, oops, I may sometimes say text messages. But the bottom line is, majority of the time, I'm going for the email because I want their phone number and I want their email. That way, I can continually drip and follow up with them if things go sideways or they're just not ready to make a buying decision at the time. It happens, right? Um... But I want that contact information so I can drip on them. So I'll say, you know, regarding how you can grow your business, would it be good if I send it to you via email? If I were to send, and here it is, right? It's part of the script. I'm jumping ahead. It's just natural. It comes. Um, if I were to send you some information for the next five minutes, how soon will you get around to it? So I've gotten your email. Okay, great. How soon will you get around to it? You're setting an appointment to follow up with them about them reviewing the information. If you do not set the appointment, and you send them information, they may look at it today. They may look at it two weeks from now, two years from now. You will be in a land of maybe. Maybe I look at it. Maybe I won't. You'll be calling them up. Oh, I haven't gotten around to it. Call them up. Oh, I haven't had time. Call them up. Well, I looked at it, but I didn't look at it. No. I'm letting you know. I'm not begging you. This is backbone. This is posture once again. I'm not begging you to take a look at nothing. So if I were to send the information to you via email, when would you take a look at it? Well, I don't know when I'm going to take a look at it. No worries. Look, I can follow through another time that's more convenient. You're not going to put me in that bag. I'm going to have posture. I have a backbone. I'm not a random incense salesperson. Okay? So it's a serious business. My business is serious. My time is valuable. I'm just giving you a little bit of psychology in this interaction. Right? You're not being an a-hole, but you are standing on backbone to let them know that you're a serious professional. And this is how serious professionals get down. Okay? So... Um, and they may say, well, look, um, I'll look at it this time. Great. Follow them at the time. They said they're going to look at it shortly thereafter, morning or afternoon, set a time, follow them. Do not let two and three weeks go by because they will not remember it. They will not remember what you shared with them. So try to meet with them at the time they say they will look at it or within a couple hours of that time. Okay. So set the appointment. Okay. So once again, What's the best marketing content to share? Follow your B2B leadership. If you're new, you don't know what content to share. Okay, Set the appointment. Once again, um, you're back in default mode. When you follow up with them, when you follow up with them, there's only one question you should ask. Not how do you feel? Don't get on the line trying to shoot the ish with them and all that other fun stuff. No. You follow one question. Only this question. Do not ask any other question. If you don't ask any other question and the script does not work for you, once again, you're a grown adult. Whose fault is that? Yours. What you're going to say is, what did you like best? What did you like best? And you're going to listen. 
and the information they shared about what they like best, you're going to use that content and information to do what? Confirm the appointment. That's the goal. That's the bag to get eyeball to eyeball with them, ideally in person. Um, but you got to do Zoom and so be it. Okay. Um, and you're going to say, look, they're going to share with you and you're going to say, great, that's fantastic. I can say exactly how you feel. I really appreciate that. Or, you know, those are great questions. Look, what would be the best time to catch up with 15, 20 minutes so I can give you an opportunity to share everything and that way you can make an educated decision? Because I know as an entrepreneur or a business owner, sharp entrepreneurs and business owners I know typically don't make decisions based on just a phone call or a video, right? You typically, smart entrepreneurs that I've known or in my experience has been, they typically make decisions based on 100% of the information, not just a snippet. Doesn't that just make sense? Nine times out of ten, they're gonna say yeah, because you've gotten as far their interest. Their their interest peaked. They're curious. They want to know what you're about. Okay, when will be the best time to catch up with you for approximately twenty morning or afternoon? Right, you're defaulting right back to setting the appointment. Remember that is the bag when you are calling is to set the appointment to get them onto a presentation or set the appointment so you can bring the presentation to them. That's the objective. That's the goal. All right. And that's the point I want to drive home when you're cold calling. That's the biggest mistake entrepreneurs make and PPLSI and otherwise you get on the phone, call people. You think you're going to sell them. You're not going to sell them. The goal is to get them to commit to an appointment or a time where you can have a more substantive conversation or have someone more experienced than you. Right. Third party. Have the conversation with them or invite them to one of our conference calls where they can hear the overview. Right. So there's important tips that's included. Do join appointments when all possible. Remember, B2B marketing is skilled trade. It's skilled trade. Just like being a mechanic, just like being an airline ticket, just like being a stockbroker, just like being a doctor. You would not allow a doctor to operate on you who did not matriculate through the courses they matriculate in college and then do the um, not the internship, the residency. If you found out the doctor did not do what they were supposed to do, you would not let them cut on you. Treat this business the exact same way. It's skill trade. Right. So go to the Shield Nation B2B onboarding site, learn what you need to learn. There's additional scripts. There's additional videos and tutorials about how to give a presentation, about how to give a presentation. <laughs> um, and then, of course, I have a script here that's also included about how to um, invite to open houses. So all that's in here. So with that being said, everyone, I celebrate success in advance. Goodbye for now. I wanted to make sure that folks are like, look, I need this help. I know there's a couple of us who need this script. It's like right on time. And I felt remiss that we didn't have anything available to kind of speak to this is the approach you should be taking. With that being said, everyone have a fantastic day. Celebrate success in advance. Goodbye for now.